Yo, what's going on, homies? It's your boy Stumps back from the OPTC video. And in today's video, I am officially, in my opinion, declaring Gear 5 6 Plus Luffy to be the best PvP character in the entire game. Recently, I put out a PvP tier list, and I actually said that this guy was, was the best character in the game. However, I was still a bit unsure when comparing this particular unit and Roger Whitebeard. What both of them do for so many teams is basically unrivaled with how much damage they output, their tankiness, their passives, how good they are just being slotted onto different teams where they don't exactly work the best. In today's video, excuse me, I have been unwell, so I apologize if my throat cuts out every now and again. Uh, I, I, do, I do apologize. Um, in today's video, we're going to be do taking a look at my Super Pirate Rumble shenaniganry. Now, I wanted to record this video live, but as I mentioned, I have been unwell. So, I haven't really had a chance to sort of sit down and record whilst playing. But, I did get a chance to sort of record my Super Pirate Rumble matches. Um, and some of the teams that I was utilizing with Gear 5 in the back end of Championship and Super Pirate Rumble. Now, Gear 5, Guild Tesoro were actually boosted for this particular Super Pirate Rumble. They gave you two extra points for the Super Pirate Rumble ranking. So, majority of the teams that I was using tried to include them in the front lines. The rest of the team was a different makeup depending on what I was actually going up against. If I was going up against Dex, I would use stuff like Strength because Kaido and Kandro also had a similar buff. And then I could use stuff like Kaku and then run your typical driven bench. If I was coming up against stuff like Strength, I would use a more quick centric team and then run Kaido and Kandro on the bench. And if I was versing strength, uh, sorry, uh, what was the other one? Quick. If I was versing quick, I would run a more deck-centric team with Kaido and Kandra on the bench. So you guys have seen an array of fights in today's video. But I just wanted to highlight how powerful Luffy is on all of these teams. Tesoro as well, but mainly Luffy. Luffy's not getting any buff from the team besides himself. And the CT reduction that Tesoro can actually give. He also gives gets a defensive up if um, Tesoro pops his special up in the right spot. However, Luffy as a one-man wrecking ball is just so incredibly strong. Like, he does so much for the team just by making himself so goddamn strong. He has the ability to remove half stats on himself. He has the ability to... Um, revive at 100% HP, he goes through defense on a massive shot, and he does 5,000 fixed damage. He's just absolutely insane, and chucking him in the middle slot on any team, and it was a lot of fun in Super Pirate Rumble this particular season, just throwing together a bunch of teams that included both Tesoro and Luffy in the front lines, and then utilizing the PvP rare recruits that sort of work in conjunction of taking on their opposite color. Ideally, I wanted to try and find as many dex fights as possible. However, hitting the update button was just getting a little bit old. It was getting a little bit boring. So I sort of settled for versing strength dex and quick. And look, there were some exceptions to the rule. Coming up against other gear fives. Coming up against Zoros at, from time to time. Coming up against Wipin and Rogers. Just wasn't the smartest play. However, whenever I'd see a build like this particular quick team, I could basically throw on stuff like Dalton, Subamask, and Moria, those very good quick nerfers, alongside Tesoro and Luffy to take on these particular builds. Now, you guys will see in this fight, we lose Subamask super early. Like, this unit has resistance against the quick typing, yet Gear 5 is actually still alive, which is kind of nuts to think about. And then when Gear 5 dies, he just comes back with max HP. Like, he's just ready to go once again. Now, this fight is looking pretty grim. We have Kaido and Kandro in the back. They're two units you do not want to be using when you're coming up against Quick. However, with Luffy in the middle and Luffy with a special, I still feel incredibly confident going into the back end here. We have Pell, we have Dalton. These two units are incredibly strong. They buff each other, which works nicely. And um, still having Moria alive also was fairly comforting. This is where you'll see the power of uh, Kaido, actually. Getting him low HP and then actually getting him to hit very hard was actually very rare. Um, but worked quite well in this particular fight. Luffy in the front, though, he's just a monster. He just does so much for the team. The Whoever thought putting a revive on a character that's immune to half stats and can go through defense is absolutely absolutely insane. I would recommend, if you do have this Luffy, 6 plus I'm talking about, I would recommend getting him to like what, at least 130. Um, use some posters on him, get him to 150. Remember, with Gear 5, you can have an unevolved and an evolved copy, so utilizing posters doesn't go to waste because you can still use copies to max out stuff like rush now i got mine to 130 because i still need three more rush dupes 
And once I pull those dupes, that'll basically get mine to 150. I didn't really want to go too hard in that regard. Utilizing posters on Luffy is not a bad idea, especially with Grand Party as well. This guy in Grand Party is such a demon. And basically, if you have him at 130, it's almost a guaranteed 15 wins every single season. It's not, but like, if you know how to use the unit right, and RNG is a little bit in your favor, you are going to be in a really good spot. But what does Luffy really do, and why is he like so... Why am I gassing him up so much? Again, all of these teams that you're seeing, he's not boosted drastically, except for what he's giving himself, and whatever Tesoro is giving him. He's literally just running off his own firepower, and he's only buffing himself for the team. The rest of the team is sort of just working, doing its thing around them with a one-man short. But Luffy is a one-man wrecking crew, just works so nicely. At level uh, 5, his passive gives level 6 attack, speed, and defense, as well as crit to free spirit characters. And then he revives one time with 100% max HP. Like, look how hard he just got hit by freaking Kdad. Um, and then his Rumble Special on a 34 second cooldown does 5,000 fixed damage to enemies in a large sideways range. Gives himself a level 5 attack buff to Free Spirit. Well, it's still Free Spirit, but for these teams, he's only for himself. And then deals one, uh, two times his attack that will ignore defense to one enemy with the highest defense. And as you guys will see right here, this shot hurts. It's around 10,000. 9.7 was the, was the number on Zoro there. This shot hurts. It does a lot of damage. And at the back end of a fight, it will basically kill something. It, it does so much damage that it'll either kill something or in the early stages will bring something down low enough so the rest of the team can finish it off. Now, we hit Zoro in this regard. And as you can see, Zoro has a revive. So it's a pretty good unit to hit for the opposition. And this is why I was kind of avoiding Zoro's because the revive of Zoro is kind of nasty. On top of that, his counter mechanic is pretty good. Um, hits you very, very hard. And especially when Luffy doesn't have a lot of defense because... He's not getting buffed onto this team besides what Tesoro is giving him. He's still sitting at 12 defense for the team. Like, it's it's crazy what a man on, on just a random team is actually getting. Now, he does get killed here, which is quite strange for most teams. But because the bench is so strong, like, we can just have our units come in. And quick versus strength actually was re a really, really good matchup. Because Tesoro was getting a lot of extra buffs from a lot of our driven and our quick units. So now the team sort of just becomes a straight quick team. Luffy is just there for those extra points. And then Kanjuro and Kaido were sort of just floating around in the back. This ability, though, of just sliding in on a majority of teams that obviously have type advantage. Like, these teams have an advantage over what I'm facing. But being able to just slide a unit like this onto a team and it actually working, it's kind of nuts to think about. Because in this day and age, with PvP needing so much synergy, the, the, just the super strong units, like Roger Whitebeard and now this Luffy, sort of stand the test of time because you can just throw them in anywhere where they would possibly have an impact, like what Roger White is doing for Strikers. But with Luffy, you don't even have to worry about that. Luffy just gets thrown straight into any team, and that 5,000 fixed damage is going to be beneficial. The, def the attack through defense is always going to be beneficial because he's giving himself 11 attack up. If you can get an attack up from the rest of the team, it's absolutely insane. And you guys have seen what, he's, what he can do on an actual team, on a free spirit team, on a Psy free spirit team. We we've seen what this man has the potential of actually outputting. But just throwing him in on any team allows you to just do so much cool stuff. Now, ideally, if this wasn't Super Pirate Rumble, we wouldn't be utilizing stuff like Tesoro on every team. We wouldn't be using PvP Rare Recruits on every team. On the Strength team, we're probably utilizing stuff like Kdad and Odin. I wouldn't be using Kaido and Kanjuro, wasting two Legend spots as well. But I had to sort of work with what I had. And going top 1,000 in Super Pirate Rumble, I think is probably going to be my play moving forward. This took me around 25 gems to get top 1,000. And the, the gem return is uh, 20. And then with our alliance ranking online and stuff like that, it'll just make up the rest of the gems there. So I think moving forward in Super Pirate Rumbles, I'll definitely be utilizing gems to try and get myself into that top 1000, build myself up some pirate uh, festival tickets. So that way I can level up my shrines and all that sort of stuff as well. And if you guys can build out particular teams or even uh, build out teams that work really well and just sort of not worry about the Super Pirate Rumble ranking, I would highly recommend doing so as well. These teams were obviously tailor-made for the Pirate Super Pirate Rumble ranking and trying to maximize my points for my alliance as well. But it was all made possible because Luffy's just so strong. Like, Tesoro, he's really good and he's probably one of the most versatile PvP units. He being a rainbow booster obviously affects the team as well, but nothing like what Luffy's doing. Luffy's just straight damage output. Um, he brings units down low so then Tesoro can come in and the rest of the team can sort of finish them off. And he was just so much fun watching him work 
in a lot of areas where he actually shouldn't. Now, whilst this was really fun in Super Pirate Rumble, it does alarm me and does scare me a little bit for future Grand Party seasons. In Grand Party, this guy is an absolute weapon. This guy does so much damage, his burst is so incredibly powerful, and the unit can now, as you guys see here, really just be thrown on any team that you like. If you have a very good defensive set of rules that buff Quick Driven or anything like that, and you're basically building out a team that is very, very reliant on uh, PvP rare recruits, and you have enough room to just slide a legend on the team, Luffy's probably going to be your go-to. On top of that, he's always going to be your leader. And with different rule sets of having your leader in the front lines, giving extra buffs, this guy can now just literally go anywhere you want and then just buff the rule set. His GP leader skill gives level 7 attack and HP to free spirit characters, gives level 3 CT to free spirit characters as well, and then strength and dex gets level 6 HP and speed and level 3 defense. This is kind of nuts, right? If we're taking this strength team that we're using right now and we just chucked Luffy on it, and then we're utilizing um, the, the rule set that maybe might be, oh, if you have your leader in, in on the team, give strength characters level 7 HP, hypothetically, now Luffy is buffing himself with the level 7 attack and HP, CT speed. Any other free spirits on the team are going to get buffed, like Kdad, Odin, Law, Toki. There's a lot of free spirit strength characters, as you guys have seen with the free spirit slasher team. And then strength characters are getting level 6 HP and speed, as well as level 3 defense. So you can do some really, really fun stuff with Luffy. Just chucking him in, depending on a, depending on a rule set. And then with his burst, after dealing 55,000 damage, which is very, very easy to do, you then get a 2.65 times leader base attack that will ignore defensive effects to all enemies. Gives level 10 attack, speed buff to strength, dex, and psi characters for 30 seconds. I, I don't know if that's free spirit, or maybe it's still psi. And then applies level 5 defense buff to strength, dex, and psi characters for 30 seconds. And then completely removes half stats on the entire team. This is nuts. Being able to remove half stats for the entire team is a nice little, like, cherry on top. But really what you're gaining here is just a massive bunch of damage that can wipe out the entire team. So be on guard when versing Luffy 6 plus teams in the future. Because this guy is going to see play across the board for a very, very long time. Whether you're building strength teams, whether you're building dex teams, whether you're building psi teams. This unit is going to pop up even when the rule set doesn't favor him, just like Roger was doing. And just absolutely tearing shreds through, the, through, through you. Or utilizing this unit in a way that you, you see fit to terrorize your opposition. Now, the final team that you guys see here was a bit of a different one. I decided to sort of throw together something that didn't use Kanjuro and Kaido to sort of just take down some other teams if I sort of ran up against them. And this particular build was actually a lot of fun. It became a bit of a Psy quick sort of build that was very striker-centric, but then had Luffy on the team as well. He utilizes the PvP rare recruit Psy Hina and her ability to buff strikers, and then Tesoro is getting a lot of buffs from this team across literally everyone, besides Roger Whitebeard. But then Roger Whitebeard's getting buffed from um, themselves, and then Kuzan's doing some nice stuff for Quick and Psy. So this particular team was actually really, really fun, and has been a team that I actually have been using quite a bit since um, Super Pirate Rumble, because it just tears shred through the opposition. Luffy goes so hard going through defense, or Roger Whitebeard going through defense. And when you have the two best PvP characters on the game, and then one of the most versatile in Tesoro on the team, you can do some absolutely crazy things. So be careful of Gear 5, 6 Plus. He's the best PvP character in the entire game as of the Stump trademark. But let me know you guys what you guys think in the comment section below. While you're down there, don't forget to bell the like button, hit the subscribe button, do all that good stuff for me. Most importantly, wherever you guys are in this beautiful world, please remember to enjoy the rest of your day. As always, homies, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next one.